Um, at this time, Mayor Benjamin, now do you all wanna go straight into that particular item or do you wanna take up the public hearing and first reading for all zoning and planning matters? Starting with item 14, or would you like to go um, straight to item C17? No, oh, wait a minute. Item 20. 20. Okay. Go to 20. Well, with that, Mayor Benjamin, um, I'll at Ms. Hampton is on the line. And if you could um, open up uh, the discussion for the public hearing on that particular item. All right, we're going to open up the um, public hearing on the Unified Development uh, Ordinance, um, the adoption of the new City of Columbia zoning map. And I think, um, uh, as it may have been stated already, uh, uh, this is a, a official public hearing. Um, but we do want to make it clear, as uh, I think it's been articulated by, by several of our council members, that this will be a very deliberative process. It has been a long time coming. Staff has been working very closely with the community in a very engaged and transparent process. But obviously, the challenges presented uh, by our, our limited accessibility because of COVID-19, we want to make sure we spend some quality time uh, uh, answering questions and, and being available to the public for all, um, uh, all, all the questions that might uh, come about um, recognizing the uh, the very uh, intimate nature of, 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 of property ownership and, and what it means to each and every one of us. So we're going to be very intentional about ensuring that, that this dialogue is ongoing for a period of time, but we're opening this public hearing. So please, uh, Madam City Manager, uh, Ms. Hampton, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, greetings, I'm Krista Hampton. I'm the Director of Planning and Development Services, and I, along with our City Zoning Administrator, Rachel Bailey, are pleased to be here today to present the new zoning map for your consideration. As the Mayor mentioned, it will only be a public hearing and a vote will not be taken. My first order of business, so I can make sure it gets into record, is to say thank you. Um, thank you to Council, to the City Manager, Teresa Wilson, um, to my direct boss, Assistant City Manager, Missy Gentry, to our planning commission members over these past five years and the citizens and stakeholders who have kept up with the project and provided valuable input. The project is better because of all of you. We had a terrific consulting team in Clarion and Associates and Planning Next who helped achieve the vision laid out by our community. And finally, I want to especially thank our amazing staff. Although some have moved on before the completion of the project, our staff worked tirelessly through many drafts of the code and subsequently mapping over 46,000 parcels, doing some of the most arduing, arduous and grueling work I have experienced in my years at the city. If you subscribe to what Teddy Roosevelt stated in that nothing in the world is worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain and difficulty, then this ordinance and map are surely <laughs> worth having. We usually keep our presentations on zoning matters brief. However, because of the significance and to help answer questions received by staff and council, we will take a bit more time on this matter tonight to provide needed information. So let's first review the agenda for the presentation. During this pre presentation, we will provide context and background to the project to include a brief history. We will move into an overview of the Uniform Development Ordinance. So while the matter before council tonight is consideration of the zoning map to implement the recently adopted UDO, for those who may be new to the project, we want to provide information on this new code. The intention is to obtain input and allow for additional questions over the coming weeks. We will then review the new zoning districts that are illustrated on the maps. Next, we will review how to navigate the maps to see what the current and proposed zoning is for a given parcel. We will go over a proposed schedule for council consideration to complete the project. And finally, we will allow council to conduct the hearing and be available to answer questions. So how to comment tonight. In addition to viewing the meeting at the city's website, the public may listen to audio and participate in the meeting via telephone by calling 855-925-2801. When you're prompted, you can enter the meeting code, which this evening is 99 07. At that point, you need to press star one to listen. Stay on the line until public input portion of the hearing is announced. That will help our clerk immensely. Just stay on the line. 
If you are not able to stay until the end, however, you can press star two and leave a voice message. Comment time is limited to three minutes. So when the public input portion is announced, you can do the aforementioned star two, or if you want to speak live, you can press star three to be placed in the speaker queue. And staff will unmute callers during this time. Callers are limited to three minutes. And please, if you are participating by phone, make sure you turn off any of the other audio on your devices before you speak to avoid feedback. So let's review some context and background by answering some questions. So what is the Uniform Development Ordinance that this map is implementing? The Unified Development Ordinance, fondly known as the UDO, is a combination of the zoning and the land development ordinance for the City of Columbia. Zoning is the law that determines how land or property can be used in the city. It regulates the uses and the size and location of buildings and a host of other development related items like parking, landscaping and signage. Zoning does not require you to take an action. It sets the table for projects and development, but it's up to the property owner to do the work to make that happen. So what is the role of the zoning map in this ordinance? To enact zoning regulations in the text, the UDO establishes varying districts, residential, commercial, industrial, that each have different sets of uses and standards. These districts are established by ordinance and the official zoning map identifies the location of these districts, thereby specifying the land use and development requirements. This is what is under consideration by city council. So why do we need this rewrite? I can tell you it's not because we just woke up one day to decide we needed to change the ordinance. A new ordinance has been needed for at least 10 years, if not more. The current ordinance is over 40 years, which in and of itself does not make it obsolete for those of us who are over 40 years would attest. However, over time, piecemeal changes have created a code that is contradictory, difficult to understand, and does not necessarily reflect the development patterns desired. The UDO resolves these issues and is intended to simplify and streamline development review, providing an easy to un understand set of rules while creating a more modern code. And so how did we get to this point? We've been working to get to this point for quite some time. The first step in this project actually was in 2014 when we rewrote the land use plan. We called it Plan Columbia. It provided the needed policy guidance for this new ordinance. Directly after adoption of that in 2015, we began the process to rewrite the code. We had numerous public meetings at various stages of the project. The first was a community workshop to obtain input on what the goals of the code should be. It was followed by meetings on the assessment of the code and drafts of sections as they became available. The timeline looks like this and the graphic illustrates the beginning of the process with Plan Columbia through drafting the modules. The drafting of the code was completed in 2019 with the adoption of the text in August of that year. Soon after we began to apply the new districts to the over 46,000 parcels located in the city. We completed this task in early 2020. We're excited about getting started with some public meetings and published those maps in March of 2020 which was of course impacted by the pandemic. So we've established the context in the background. Next, we're gonna take some time to provide an overview of the ordinance that was adopted and this map would implement. The key themes and goals during the Plan Columbia process and the ordinance process, we received input on what the code should address. And they led to these key goals here. To create a user-friendly code is the primary goal of this project. This has been accomplished by a complete reorganization of the document, better use of flow charts, tables, clarifying language. It's more logically oriented, organized, easier to understand. It streamlines procedures and it provides flexibility in the appropriate context. Because ordinances are intended to implement the comprehensive plan, this also works to implement Plan Columbia, which has become a part of the Columbia Compass that everybody's aware of in aligning these regulations. It's intended to modernize regulations to strongly encourage con context sensitive infill. Um, that was 
Most of the city is developed and most of our commercial development is infill and we need to have regulations that support and encourage that in appropriate locations. Finally, support green development practices, clarifying standards for alternative energy use and enhancing urban agriculture standards. So right here you see the nine articles of the ordinance and this is the structure of the ordinance. With the new reorganized code, it's logical. It makes information easier to find. We are going to go briefly through each of these sections to describe the purpose and the impact. The first general provisions article is really the housekeeping section of the ordinance. It sets out the authority. An important part of the section is the transitional provisions. These establish the rules for how developments recently approved or in the process of being approved during the code will be handled, so that's predictable. The administration and, and the geeky part of me just loves this section. This section creates simple but a very impactful change in this code. It's to consolidate and streamline all procedures for development review into one article. It's intended to improve the efficiency and transparency of the review processes by consolidating and standardizing generally applicable procedures. It streamlines existing review procedures and adds more flexible procedures where appropriate. It's organized into five sections. So now a reader can go to one place to see who is involved in the process and the steps needed to complete it. To save my voice, I'm gonna turn it over to Rachel for a section here. Rachel? All right, so next we have Article 3, which is our zoning districts. This article establishes the basic standards for the various base, base planned unit development and overlay zoning districts. The base districts include residential, activity and corridor, institutional and campus, and industrial districts, consistent with the structure of development types established in Plan Columbia. In addition, the lineup carries forward several current zoning districts and also modifies and adds new districts to better align the structure to policy direction that's set out in Plan Columbia and to make the current regulations more user friendly and efficient. We've offered the reason for that is the use of tables. The format of the district regulations is greatly enhanced with the use of 2D and 3D graphics. These photos are there to show example development types as well as tables to concisely summarize the standards. So while it is longer, it should be easier to understand, which we thought was a pretty valuable trade-off. The new zoning districts consist of nine residential districts, nine mixed use districts, five institutional and campus districts, three industrial and one PD. Now PD was formerly called PUD. Residential districts have largely stayed the same and we'll discuss that a little bit more on the next slide. A notable change in the non-residential districts is that many more are mixed use and the use and dimensional standards are based on the context of the development instead of a one size fits all approach. The context are neighborhood, community and regional. It's also important to note that our historic and design district overlays are remaining the same. They just have that name change. There are new institutional use districts to reflect the heavy presence of these uses in Columbia. And we also are retaining our industrial districts. We would like to take a moment to review the residential districts specifically, since we've received quite a few questions about these in particular. So we have the TC, which is the Transitional Conservation District, the LLR, which is a large lot reserve district. We have our residential single family districts, which are the large, medium, and small lot districts. RD, which is two family, as well as the RDMV, which is the Mill Village Districts, RD, two family district. We also have our RM mixed districts, so the RM1 and the RM2. In all but a handful of cases throughout the city, the classification of parcels in residential districts has stayed the same. If a parcel was RS, it is now RSF, and if it was RG, it is now RM or RD, and the same with our RD, those have remained RD. In addition, the standards and uses permitted remain largely the same. An important thing that we do wanna note is that RM, those mixed residential districts, 
that does not mean mixed use. It means that as in the existing RG or general residential districts that we have now, if there's adequate lot area, setbacks, lot coverage, and other factors, then different types of residential uses could be permitted. The principal change in the district regulations across the board is that front setbacks have been reduced anywhere from five to 10 feet and the permitted lot coverage has increased. We should note that a few of these changes from RS to RM, such as parcels on Adger around Dreer, those were not intended to be changed and are being changed back. That is a frequent question we've got, so we just wanted to make that clear. And the chart on the next slide will illustrate the regulations for our current and proposed districts for a comparison. So as you can see from this chart, the regulations have generally stayed the same. Where changes have been made, it was because many of the existing structures in our neighborhoods did not conform to them, such as front setback or lot coverage. So as you can see on this table, it has the current district versus the proposed, and it goes through lot area, lot width, density, depth, lot coverage, and our setbacks and height regulations. And just to note again, we do carry forward all of our historic design and community character districts. They remain in the same location. They just have slightly different names. The next article is article four. So this contains our use regulations. So it consolidates our principal accessory and temporary uses. It includes use tables that identify what uses are allowed in what zoning districts. It also includes standards that apply generally across the board, as well as specific standards for specific uses. This section has been streamlined considerably. It consolidates the 305 uses we currently have from the obsolete SIC code into 123 uses with specific definitions at the end of the code. Article five, that is our development standards. So this article consolidates all the development standards related to the physical layout of new development. So there's also, it differs from our land development subdivision standards, which will come up in article six. But in article five, it's divided into 12 sections for parking, landscaping, tree protection, open space, et cetera. And Article 6 contains those subdivision standards. Article 7 through 9, so Article 7, that is our nonconformity section. It greatly improves on the current code in that it consolidates all provisions related to handling nonconforming uses and structures into one area. There are new provisions for dealing with non-conforming site features, including street parking, landscaping, and signs. It builds on the partial compliance provisions in 17411 of our current ordinance that pertain to expansions and renovations of existing buildings. Article eight consolidates all enforcement provisions for the zoning code. And article nine contains the standards rendering interpretations, rules of measurement, and definitions used in the UBO. This section greatly enhances the ease of using this code as it consolidates each of these tools for administering and interpreting in one location. Terms are clearly defined and consistent with usage elsewhere in the regulations and they're written in plain English. So that concludes the overview of the UDO. We'll now go over how to navigate the map of the current and proposed districts. The link to the draft map is on the project webpage, which can be located at www.weplantogether.org slash Columbia Review. At this site, you can also review the project background and view the text of the UDO. We are available to make appointments to meet with those who need access to a paper copy of the map. You can call the zoning office during normal business hours at 803-545-3333 to make an appointment. 
Once at the site, you can either pan to explore the city as a whole, or you can type a specific address in the upper left search bar. On the right side, you'll see the layer list. You can choose to see the current or proposed zoning by selecting the zoning district in the layers in the upper right. Selecting a parcel will provide the zoning district information. An important note, if you're searching for a specific parcel and it does not have a classification that comes up, that means that the parcel is either split zoned or it has been recently annexed and hasn't had a district assigned yet. Please contact the zoning office for information. From here, you can click on the district name to be taken to an information sheet on the new district as shown on the next page. A new window will open showing you the information on the district. This is the page exactly from the text of the ordinance. So it gives you the purpose of the new district as well as intensity and dimensional standards. Our overlay districts, as we mentioned before, a lot remain in the same area, but we do have three new overlays. Those boundaries can be viewed on the zoning page at columbiase.net slash zoning. That's our airport height overlay, the 80-30 height overlay, as well as our setback overlay. At this point, we were going to go to a, an online map um, but I think in the interest of time, we'll have that um, available to review once council has some questions on the map, but that, that, that was a great way of, of reviewing it. So Rachel, we'll go on to here. Okay. All right, so your step, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Krista. No, that's okay. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and take the steps to determine the basic regulations. So if you have a house, first you go and you find that zoning district within the viewer. Then within that text of the document that's also located, you can, you can download that or view it online at that same location. Navigate to those pages in the district page in Article 3, or you can just pull it up as Rachel showed you to show the, the, the regulations for that specific district. Then to see the use tables that are permitted within that district, you go to the Uniform Development Ordinance and navigate to Article 4, and it will show you, it's a table that shows you the uses that are permitted. We'll have a P, um, a C means it's conditional. So there are conditions for you to have to have that use. An S means it's a special exception from the Board of Zoning Appeals. And if it's blank, it means it's not permitted. In addition, for commercial developments, um, we'll review the development standards in Article 5 that Rachel mentioned. And I was remiss, uh, you saw all of those fa the fabulous map with the links and to the charts and to the district pages. We could not have done that without our amazing GIS team. Um, they worked really hard to, and were very uh, solution oriented, helping us to get that viewer out there and we are greatly appreciative for all of their work. So we've reviewed the background, the history, we went over the uniform ordinance and the districts in particular. So here are, is our proposed schedule in council. This is a proposed schedule um, to find a way to forward to get this um, project to completion while allowing for additional input and, and meetings. So we'd have this public hearing this evening um, we will have available, and I'll, I'll bring that to your attention on the next slide, one-on-one um, -on -one appointments. So we would schedule those over the next week. If we need more, we'll schedule more. Um, through February 26, we'd have this period for additional input, stakeholder meetings with the neighborhoods or any other groups. We need to amend the effective date of the ordinance in the code. It's currently set for March 31st, so obviously we have to defer that. Um, we would put that back to August 30th. 
we would bring City Council the reading of the new map to you for a first reading on April 6th. Simultaneously, we'll be bringing the changes that are identified through this process um, to Planning Commission for at May on their May 3rd meeting. That would then have a City Council second reading of the entire map on June 6th. However, it would not be effective on that date. July 20th, we would bring you the changes to the map, thereby amending that map prior to the effective date. And we would have the second reading on the revisions on August 3rd, and then everything would become effective on August 30th. Um, we need that lag time in there to allow us time to reconfigure our software, um, work on some of our forms and the like. So as I mentioned, we have opportunities for one-on-one -on -one meetings. These are either by phone or a teleconference. Um, to schedule those, you can go to our website at columbiasc.gov slash zoning or the We Plan Together website. Or you can email us at zoningmap at columbiasc.gov. Uh, those are the preferred ones or during the regular business hours, give us a call and we will set up an appointment for you. And Mayor and Council, that concludes our public hearing information. So just as a reminder, um, you may, if you want to at this point in time, either press star two to leave a voicemail if you need to go, or press star three to be placed in the speaker queue. And staff will unmute the callers as they come up. Note there is a short pause as the call is admitted and callers are limited to three minutes. If you are participating phone by phone, make sure you turn off any audio on other devices before you speak so that we can avoid feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hampton. And thank you um, very much to the entire team for the uh, comprehensive presentation, even more so the comprehensive process that we've gone through. Uh, the, um, the importance of, of obviously recognizing uh, where we are now and, um, and everyone's slowing down a, a, a bit so everyone can fully understand and have uh, the ability to, to fully engage uh, with the uh, process is so important. So thank you for the uh, proposed next steps and, and updated schedule um, uh, as well. Madam Clerk, um, who do we have up first? And would yes, you restate sir. the rules it's, for folks, please? Yes, sir. As Krista stated, callers will have three minutes to speak. If you haven't already done so, please press star three to join the speaker queue. At this time, we have two individuals who are in the queue. Uh, the first individual, I do not have a name, but your phone number ends in 2970. We will proceed to add the caller into the meeting there. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, our first caller. Hello, I have a question for uh, Rick and then. Back at the start of all this COVID stuff, you said that you believed that COVID restrictions were unconstitutional. Why do you support them now? And I apologize. We need for all callers to state their name for the record. Michael Bailey. Oh, Michael Bailey. Michael Bailey. <laughs> well, that, well, thank thank, you. Uh, well I, uh, just in, in the um, interest of uh, uh, preserving the, uh, the, the focus of the public hearing uh, before us, uh, if if uh, Mr. Mr. Bailey, if uh, if in the um, at the end of the agenda, if, if Mr. Rickman wants to take up that question, he can. I think I think he may dialogue with. Uh, oh wait, so uh, you know, you guys ever going to talk about this again? No, we're talking. Well, we're talking about uh, the um, uh, the proposed uh, regulation before us. Uh, so I, I wouldn't. Well, I'm not going to have any opportunity to ask about it otherwise. Uh, I would um, ask. No, you would actually. I'm asking uh, everyone. Obviously, nope. we want to. Or that we remain focused on the on the issue before us. Um, um, that is a that is a legitimate public policy question, Mr. Bailey. Not the issue before us right when, now. When am I going to be able to ask it? Uh, uh, the at the end of the agenda, uh, when we have opportunity for public input, and we're going to and obviously if we're able to aggressively get through uh, the agenda, that should be very soon. So I would, I would encourage you just to maybe be a little, a little a, just a, a little bit more patient if, if if possible. I would really appreciate that. Okay, I'll wait. I'll ask him again then. Thank you, sir. Thank right. you so much. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Uh, we have next, uh, Madam Clerk. 
Okay, right now we have a Mr. Haynes Paul or Paul Haynes who will add the speaker to the meeting now. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, dedicated city staff, thanks for uh, hearing me out today. Um, I have a rather nuanced uh, request slash question. Um, I am a property owner in the Victory Gardens neighborhood, um, and I noticed that the designation proposed for this neighborhood is that of a RSF1 large lot. And I had spoken to Hope a little over a year ago about um, possibly changing the designation for the neighborhood to allow for more development. Um, this neighborhood uh, has not seen any new construction in over 27 years, and uh, that's due to the high cost of construction combined with low property values in the area. Um, I personally have been working diligently to, to help turn the neighborhood around. Uh, there is no functioning neighborhood association that I can tell. I've spoken with the former secretary. Um, myself and several others in the neighborhood would like the council and zoning administrators to consider um, allowing for a less restrictive zoning policy so that uh, more new lots could be created in the neighborhood and hopefully spur development and uh, bring positive changes. All right, thank you. Um, and, uh, right. Chris, Chris uh, can someone help uh, answer that? Yes, we've actually been in contact. Um, so we will, I think, we can have that conversation offline with him. Um, we, um, Ms. Devine has assisted us in making this connection, so we will continue those conversations. Super, super. Perfect. Thank, thank you thank you so much, and thanks for your leadership in helping get things organized in the neighborhood. Strong neighborhood associations make a strong neighborhood, and strong neighborhoods make a strong city. So thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Yes, sir. Madam Clerk? Okay, Mayor Benjamin, at this time, we have a voicemail message from Ms. Diane Wiley that I would like to play into the record. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. My name is Diane Wiley. My telephone number is 803-404-1070. I'm still waiting to talk to somebody. We need to talk in these meetings because this is concerning us. You all work for us, not we work for y'all. And we don't we don't have the time to sit and listen to the meetings all through because we got our day to day duties to do. But anyway, when this is over with, then we can do what we need to do as far as our communities. In our communities, two nine two zero three and four, they need some uplift. These are people that's on fixed incomes. You need to be trying to do things like that, and that zoning map. We need to be looking at the zoning map to see what's going on because it, it will stop certain things coming in our neighborhood. You know, these people don't have nowhere else to go. And, they, and, and another thing, a lot of houses, every time you turn around, somebody want to buy a house. Why you want to buy it now? Because we are in the city and it's not fair. So we need to wait until this COVID is over with to get some things done, stop doing things under the table because we need to talk to each other in, in face to face. All of y'all on city council know what I'm going through. Been out of my house going on six years. We can't get anything done. So I'm gonna pass the word on to everybody I know about what's going on. Thank you very much. Thank you. I know we'll have an opportunity to dial Ms. Wiley. Thank you so much, Madam Clerk. Um, anyone else in the queue? Um, no, sir. We don't have anyone else in the queue at this time, but I do have a message that was left on the web portal that I would like to read into the record. Please, would you? Yes, sir. The um, comment says, myself and some other residents and property owners in Victory Gardens would like for city officials to consider changing the zoning designation for the neighborhood to allow for smaller lot, lot sizes to spur new construction. No new homes have been built in the neighborhood in 27 years despite available lots. This is due to the high cost of construction and low property values. A zoning designation of RSF3 would conform to many already, already existing lots 
and be in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. There is no functioning neighborhood association, but I am willing to petition residents and owners to gauge overall opinion. I personally own three, seven properties in the area that currently has an RSF1 designation, accounting for one-tenth of the total properties affected. Please consider making this change to allow us to revitalize this neighborhood, returning it to a safe, vibrant place to live. And I do not have a name for the, oh, and that again was from Mr. Um, Paul Haynes, sir. I apologize, I didn't pick up on that. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, well, thank, thank, thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. And I know that you said Ms. Devine already closed the loop there um, on Victory Gardens. And I, and I, again, I want to, um, if there's, if there's no other, no one else who's popped into the queue, um, uh, Madam Clerk, let's uh, go ahead and continue moving. I do want to highlight again for interested parties who are paying attention uh, that there's, there's an ex, ex, not only the extended calendar that Ms. Hampton referenced earlier, but there'll be constant uh, communication, uh, online accessibility, snail mail, phone uh, uh, accessibility. Uh, there'll, there'll be a, a, a number of different ways that our staff will aggressively communicate uh, with folks. So everyone will have an opportunity to have their uh, their say. Um, obviously, I'm sure it's already anticipated, uh, Ms. Wilson, but let's make sure that uh, the, this presentation, the, the, the calendar, the ability for folks to easily understand how to, how to contact folks uh, is on the front page. Of the, of the city website and, and, we, and we continue to push that information out. Uh, any questions from council uh, uh, now uh, from staff? All right, uh, don't, all right, let's. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'm sorry. I see, I see, I see, or again, Ms. Devine, I see Mr. Rickman. Um, just, um, uh, Ms. Hampton, can you just uh, repeat again? I just wanna make sure it's clear because I, I think there's been some confusion that there can't be any changes, but based on your proposed schedule, um, it look like if there are um, input that requires changes, that um, that would go to the Planning Commission and still keep us within the schedule, but things, things can be changed. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, we have already identified a few changes that need to be made. Um, so those were mentioned earlier, in addition to a couple others, you know, with 46,000 parcels, you're going to have a few that you identify. So this, those along with others um, that we will actually bring back as part of that process to a work session to council to make sure those are aligned with you all's goals and not so that we don't have to, to do this, you know, more than twice. So we will gather those up over these next days. Um, bring those back to you at a, at a at work session type meeting and then bring those changes back um, on those dates that were um, listed um, with the, July. So we are going to make changes and we will make additional changes as a result of the feedback um, and direction from council. Thank you. Daniel, Daniel. Uh, yes, I just wanted to um, ask Krista what the best way is to connect. Uh, I know that you've gotten several phone calls and you, you were very helpful with the Wood Creek folks and other folks who had questions. Do you want to continue to use that platform um, that we did with uh, Wood Creek and, and some of the other neighborhoods where people were able to log on and kind of have a point person ask questions? Um, if necessary, and I know you made some corrections um, and clarified some things for the Heathwood neighborhood and others, but just wanted to uh, see if that if that was your preferred way to handle some of these questions that may still pop up. Certainly, if if it's kind of neighborhood wide, if it's a more general like that, it, it's best if we can get as many people together as possible to go over those questions. Once we get into the weeds and maybe property specific questions, um, that's where these 101s are useful as well. So we'll, we'll be flexible um, in how we get this information out. But um, for time's sake, it's best if we can get a bunch of people um, in, a, in, a, in a call or on a um, teleconference. Um, and then if people have things that they need to dig into, 
we can set up a, a subsequent meeting. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir, Mr. McDowell. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of in agreement with Daniel. Um, you did our, you did a presentation for the Lion Street community and it was well accepted and uh, all questions were answered. So if we could do something similar to that as we push forward, that would be uh, tremendously helpful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is gonna be a, this is gonna be a master class and and constant communication, y'all. So I think every every question you get, whether a big or small, any neighborhood, from a group or from an individual, let's make sure we have a, a seamless amount of trans uh, uh, of uh, transmitting those messages to our staff, and, and they are, are ready, willing, and able to try and address those concerns. Uh, and 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 uh, as Ms. Defiance question and, and uh, indicated. Uh, if changes need to be made, uh, we have the ability and authority to do so. So let's just let's just let's just keep on. Uh, Teresa again, just recognizing that people get all the information from so many different sources right now. Uh, so let, let's uh, let's just endeavor to be fully transparent um, as we make this this very important step forward, uh, which it, which indeed is is what it is. So uh, if there are no more questions of um, of. Uh, uh, Krista and, and the team, then I, I, I'm trying to make sure we, we're um, 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 understanding we, we do call this public hearing to an end, right? Or, or do we leave it open? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> we we, we've got some more things in the public hearing. Okay, okay, please. I'm sorry. Let's keep on going. Guys, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Um, Duval. Keep on going. Start off with 14. So are you all done with this item, Mayor? Yeah, we are. We are. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you. And we I are. want to. Hey, thank you to to our wonderful uh, sign language interpreters and Krista was thanking all of you and us but we certainly have to thank her and her team this has been quite the undertaking they've done a great job all right all right okay. good deal let's go let's go on let's go on back I apologize though we had the whole thing done with 20 since that was a big one <laughs> no back, back to 14 yes sir all right and Krista, are you prepared to switch gears back to these I items? Hope y'all can see my screen. Yes, yes. ma'am. All right. So we have an annexation with future land use map and zoning map amendments for a 0.47 acre portion at 680. It's Candy Lane. Um, it's a request to annex, assign a land use classification of UEMR, and assign a zoning of C2 with the flood protective area. All right, is there anyone here to speak in favor of or against this? Madam Clerk? No, sir, not at this time. We would ask that if someone would like to speak in uh, regard to this matter, that they press star three to join the speaker queue. Okay. All right. No, sir. All right, thank you, ma'am. So move, uh, Mr. Mayor. Movement by Mr. Uh, McDowell. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, seeing none, we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Lai? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Annexation with future land use map and zoning map amendment at 0.509 acres on the south side of Candy Lane. A request to annex and assign a land use classification of UEMR and transitional sensitive lands and assign a zoning of neighborhood commercial at C2 with a floodplain overlay. Again, this is a small donut hole. All right, super. Um, Madam Clerk, we have anyone uh, who signed up to speak on this matter? No, sir. All right. So move, Mr. Uh, Mayor. I move by Mr. McDowell. Is there a second? Second. All right, moving probably second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. The clerk call the roll. Mr. Vernon? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Thank you. Duval would also like to be recorded as I. <laughs> I apologize, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Good deal. All right. An annexation with a future land use map and zoning map amendment for 103 acres 
um, near Circle View Road and 21.9 acres on the west side of Circle View Road. It's a request to annex assigned the land use classification of UEMR and tra transitional sensitive lands, TS, with the zoning of RG2, general residential with a flood protective overlay. Well, location. Madam uh, Clerk, do we have anyone who signed up to speak um, in favor of or against this matter? No, sir. All right. All right. The. Um, uh, is a um, uh, motion? So moved. All right, is there a second? Second. second. Uh, any discussion? Seeing uh, none, we'll move the previous question. I'm Clark Caller Roll. Mr. Vernon? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. All right. Uh, donut hole right near downtown, annexation with future land use and zoning map amendments. Properties on East Broadway, Post Street, South Assembly, um, South Evans, and South Assembly Street. It's a request to annex with a land use classification of AC2 and UCAC1 and UCMR3. Um, Scrabble, I just won. Assign zoning of light industrial, that's M1, with a portion in the flood protective area, and C2 with a portion in the flood protective area. This is a much better way of describing it via a map. Right here on South Assembly, Capital City Ballpark is right across the street. That was, that was pretty good, Krista. Uh, is there anyone who signed up to speak in favor of or against this uh, matter, Madam Clerk? No, sir, not at this time. All right, is there a motion? We'll move. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Question, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Krista, can you, can you conf confirm all these properties are currently owned by the University of South Carolina? Correct. Great. Thank you. Certainly. All right. All right. Seeing this uh, further discussion, we'll move the previous question of Kirk Colorado. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. What we have now is only a future land use map amendment. Um, we recently had a request for a rezoning which was withdrawn, but it showed that the land use at this location, which is Performance Parkway at the Midlands Tech campus, um, it, this is to modify it from industrial to employment campus, which will permit a great many more uses. Again, it's only land use, it's not zoning, but um, instead of having to do a two-step process potentially in the future, um, this will facilitate uh, a quicker development. So this is to go from the industrial into the employment campus. Madam uh, Clerk, has anyone signed up to speak on this matter? No, sir. All right, thank oh, you. Uh, there's a motion. Is there a second? I move to approve. All right, moved by Mr. McDowell, second by Mr. Davis. Is there any, is there any discussion? And y'all feel free to, I can't, with, with the map up, I can't see everyone's hand at the same time. So if, if, uh, if I miss you, please speak up. Um, seeing no discussion, I um, move the previous question. The clerk call a roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you. This is a zoning map amendment or a rezoning for parcels on Oak and Henry Streets. This is a request to rezone the parcels from general residential, that's RG1, and RG2 and C2. So it's got a, quite a, a melange here to C1. Um, this is the property that the second Nazareth Perch has recently been um, working to improve. Great. All right. Is there anyone who signed up to speak in favor of or against this matter, Madam Clerk? No, sir. So move, Mr. Mayor. Move by Ms. McDonald's there a second. 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 Uh, Mr. Rickman. Any, is there any discussion from council? 
Seeing none, I'll move the previous question. The clerk call roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. And, sir, that now concludes your zoning public hearing. Thank All you. Right. All right. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you.